I'm gonna use a sports analogy here to kind of illustrate what I'm doing as to how I build my financial dream team. There's gotta be a leader, okay? So in any, any sports team, there's, there's a leader. So in this example, I'm gonna use uh, football as my example. I think most people would, would relate to this. So typically in football, the quarterback is the leader of the team. The quarterback is the one that is putting the plays together, letting everyone know on the team their, their positions, what the next play will be, what the next play after that will be. And the quarterback is supposed to be able to really process a lot of different scenarios, a lot of different potential routes that one can go to score a touchdown, right? earn more points in, in the game. So in the game of life, as it relates to building your financial dream team, if I had to give a title for someone that's a quarterback on your financial dream team, I would put that person as the financial coach. They may call themselves a consultant. They might call themselves a strategist. I would say one of those three, financial coach, consultant, strategist, maybe even a financial accountability partner this is someone that is not necessarily trying to sell an end product, right? This is someone you literally just hire for their time, right? That you, you invest money to get in a room with this person face-to-face -face or Zoom, and you're in it's one-to-one, -one, ideally, and this person is simply hearing what you're going through, hearing your problems, hearing the ideas that you have, and the coach is supposed to process those ideas, run scenarios, give you ideas to, to leave with, challenge your ideas, get you to think really big, right? And it could also be a, a second opinion type person as well. So let's say you're looking at investing with um, a real estate investor, right? You've got two people you're looking at. Before you invest with that investor, for you dish out money to that person. If you're building a financial decision-making process, part of your steps is to go talk to someone. Typically that's our spouses, a partner, a confidant, a, a close friend. You let them know, hey, I'm about to invest in this real estate deal, right? But when you go to your spouse or a partner or a trusted covenant or a close friend, that isn't necessarily experience in that world of investing and saving and multiplying money and managing risk. They're just gonna give their opinion of their limited knowledge and sometimes that's not what you need. You don't need someone to necessarily agree with you. You don't need someone to necessarily disagree or argue with you on your idea that you wanna invest and go make money. You wanna go to someone that's a professional that has seen this question presented before that has dealt with these situations and you can process what does that investment with this person look like? Okay, they're investing in Georgia. Okay, they're investing in California. Okay, they're investing in Texas, right? Where you're gonna be a private money lender or you're gonna be uh, in the deal. You're gonna have equity in the deal or this is a, a long-term, this is a flip, this is a wholesale, whatever it may be. You're processing the, the risk overall. What does the global economic environment look like? What is your micro economic environment look like? Does the month, does your finances make sense for this investment? You're discussing those ideas, right? So I would say, me personally, the first person that I'm looking for to build my dream team is going to be a financial coach, consultant, strategist, someone that is in the middle, but can also lead the conversation and get you to start thinking about these different things to build your kingdom. Right, the end game here, in my opinion, I always like to give this, like what, what, what's the end game? What's the purpose of doing all this? I think my personal opinion is to build a kingdom, right? To build your kingdom here on planet Earth. Now, we can go one step further, right? And this is where I would introduce my faith into the equation, right? So generally, this, this applies to anyone. No faith, some faith, in between faith, hardcore faith, any religion, this template works. And the end game being you're building a kingdom, which is the highest form of authority on planet Earth, is to be king of your domain. If you're the king of your domain, your household economy, as a man, 
as a woman, queen, right? So either or, and king, queen come together. These are the highest roles on planet Earth. There is no higher role. A president, a prime minister, an ambassador, a governor, a mayor are all below. This is the highest level, the highest authority you, you ideally want to be in, a king or queen. And you have a domain. This is your territory over which you have rulership over. You get to dominate and control what occurs in your domain, right? So the highest level on earth, boom, king, you build a kingdom, your environment. And then one level above that, my opinion is where I involve my faith, is I say, actually, this isn't my kingdom. I am simply managing in a king's position. I have a king's position on earth, but I'm simply managing for my father in heaven, who is the king of all kings. Okay. So that is the faith component purpose for building this dream team for me. If you don't agree with this part, you can just simply X that out and kind of just stick it right here. Keep it right there for now. Right. So either or your end game is either build a kingdom for yourself where you are the ruler, you are the king, you're the queen. You are fully independent, free from all the pressures of life in this world. Right. And you can create success for many other people. You can do philanthropic work. You can do whatever you want. You're king, right? Or you take it a step further and you say, actually, I got put on this planet, not by me alone, by someone else. And you go back through the, through the lineage and you come to find out maybe there is this uh, creator on this planet and has a purpose for my life. And you discover that purpose and then you find your faith which came by hearing the word, and then you decide, yep, in fact, none of this is mine, and so I'm going to take this managerial role of stewardship, but still in the position of a king. So you're still the leader over your life. You control your circumstances and situations, but you're simply saying that none of this is mine in, in all humility and humbleness and righteousness. None of this is mine. I'm building success for my father in heaven and fulfilling his will over my life, not my will for my life.